Hello, I'm Abby X Toy Cat, and welcome back to an episode of the Minecraft Bedrock Update Adventures Let's Play. And every single time I criticize rain, someone's like, oh no, it's so great. I love the pitter patter, it's the best part of Minecraft. I love that my render distance goes down so low, and so for all of you people, I'm gonna pretend that I love it too. It's really easy to say that you like things that are objectively terrible, and so that's what I'm doing in today's video. Um, because hey, I actually have I, I've been for a really interesting experience these last few months, I figured I'd explain. I actually moved from the UK to the United States and then back into the UK but in an entirely different house and a few people asked about how the logistics of that even worked let alone the you know the how the why the what and so I figured I'd explain that as well as work on a project that I've wanted to for quite some time honestly every time I, I do this about once a month and then I'm like oh I should do that more often before forgetting to do it for another month. But today I'm working on my Light the Entire World project because this is the Let's Play, the weekly update as to what's going on in life, the universe, and also my survival world. Uh, but the interesting thing about uh, you know my, my Torch project is recently 1.18 has effectively announced, again it could change, uh, the specifics of it might might do, but basically in 1.18, lighting is going to be having some differences, which means that torches will likely be more powerful, and so me having all of these torches over here is going to seem pretty darn silly after that update, some might say. However, I actually am in favor of this change. Even though I've done a lot of work that will be arguably made pointless after the update, the reason that I'm in favor of them changing the light system is because right now I've lit up all the easy parts of my world. If you look around, and uh, again, look over here, you can see that the world is lit up in all of the easy places. There's a few places where it's not, such as this tunnel, which is dark very deliberately, and uh, you know, like, there's a few places I'm deliberately not lighting, but otherwise it can be very hard to tell what's lit and what's not. Not. Ignoring the daylight nighttime thing where it's hard to see what's lit and what's not in the day, um, at night you can see right here, this is over here a unlit block, probably right? But we light it up and now where does the unlit block start again? Is it over here? Is it over there? I, it's, it's really hard to tell where a torch's light can actually uh, take you, uh, I, I, I find at least. And so one of the kind of solutions to this is uh, you know, making light much more visible, and they could do that by making the actual current light more visible, because mobs spawn under any anything under level light level right now, or what they've decided to do is just make it so when you can see light, mobs can't spawn. Over here, which is a full like, uh, let, let me just prove a crazy point, if I'm not mistaken, all the way over here, a full 13 blocks away from that torch, wait, over here, as you can see, there's still some light. Um, over here, the mobs still will not spawn, and that is much closer to how I think Minecraft should be than how Minecraft is. And I, I think it's a good change. So why am I still placing all these torches, even though I know it will be obsolete later? And honestly, there's two answers to that. One is that I'm placing them in a very particular grid pattern, so that regardless of the efficiency of it, there's a certain look that it gives. I mean, as you can see right here, um, again, I, I, I like it personally. The whole world is not just lit up, it's lit up to a very high standard, which has some benefits beyond just stopping mobs spawning. But the second reason is because when you get to hilly terrain, uh, light gets really, really hard to measure. Like, okay, this is light level 14, and then this would be light level 12, because it's two blocks away. Then the next block, even though it's just three blocks away, is actually up two blocks, and so it messes some things up. And so it's like, okay, the fourth block is another two blocks away, the fifth isn't... Basically, it's really hard to actually tell what the light levels are on these blocks in between, and it's really hard to make sure you can light up a cliff without just... Let's be honest, when you want to light up a hilly area like this one right here, what you actually just do is you go, yep, torch spam, that'll do that, Will. And so yeah, this is a project I've been doing for a while. The reason I, that, you know, the reason I started carrying around this uh, shulker box, which always has torches in it, by the way, uh, yeah, that's, that's the reason I'm always prepared to do this stuff, is because of this very project. And I've honestly kind of accepted that like fully completing it is gonna be hard and long, but you know what, that's part of the reason why it's gonna be fun, I hope. And so yeah, uh, w while we do this in the background, while we place down many torches, and hopefully not kill many skeletons, but we're gonna have to, because current Minecraft uh, mob spawning is very ambiguous. Uh, again, if you're a technical player, you know what light level seven looks like, sure, it's easy. Um, but even me, even though I've been playing for a really long time, because I've never needed to care too much, like, I, even now I have to do the maths every single time from every single torch. I can't intuitively look at light level seven. And if I've been playing 10 years and that's true, how can someone who just gets into the game uh, feel it? I feel like having more things in Minecraft be intuitive would be great. You know, like the, this is actually, some people say that I, I hate Minecraft um, because I made a few videos complaining in the last week. Like, you know, it, the only things you complain about are things you hate. That is a widely known fact. I have only ever said negative things about things that I hate. Things that I like, 
I never say a single negative thing about. That is <laughs> factually accurate. I'm glad we uh, agree on that one. But more seriously than that, it's also like, well, actually, um, you know, there, there, there are just a lot of things where it's like, oh, that's that's not that's not what anyone should want from this. When when you like something, it's okay to want better from the thing. Like I I think you know the ideal is liking something exactly how it is, and we all kind of understand that. But the the part where a lot of people go missing is like, okay. Understanding where something is, is is great and wonderful, but then what if it isn't up to that? Do you just hate everything that isn't perfect? Or do you know how to improve certain things so they get closer to it? Also, it gets really messy when it comes to these cliff sides um, and placing down torches. And I'm gonna be so glad when these just basically light themselves. So make it very clear when they're not lit up themselves. Because this is this has been the bane of the whole project, like placing up and down on mountains and stuff. By the way, it's snowing over here and raining because we're at that perfect height level where the snow's rendering in, but the rain isn't. It's very fun. Um, and so, yeah, should we talk about the house now? I I, I like to talk about um, what we're actually doing in a project. I, I feel like, uh, like I've, I've said before, I feel like if, if this is your first video, it's important to be able to tune in and understand. But also, I want to give, a, you know, like an update for those of you who have been following uh, because I figured I would just explain all the house stuff in one video because it's going to be very confusing to a lot of people like, okay, so you are, you know, at home in the UK during, uh, you know, that very, that four month long, uh, you know, lockdown uh, that made it illegal to leave the country, fun fact. Um, <laughs> but you are, you're at home uh, during that, um, you know, like, uh, and, and so then you, you went to the United States because you had to for visa reasons. And uh, now, now you're back in the UK, but you're in a different house. And so, you know, for like, but what, why have you been in a new, new place basically twice? Uh, and that, that's before we count the fact that I had to go to Mexico because of, uh, strict US entry rules uh, that were put in place last March and still have not been uh, dropped, by the way. Definitely not bitter about those, by the way. See, you know, I like the United States, but I'm still uh, critical of the policy that argues that even even when the US was the epicenter of, uh, you know, the world by cases of a particular uh, virus, they were still like, yeah, but you know, we, we need to ban Europeans from doing anything inside of our country. Because, you know, that's where that's where it really comes from. That, that to me, does not seem uh, very smart. Maybe I'm the crazy one here uh, for thinking that, though. But anyway, so, you know, like, it's okay to be critical of things you like sometimes. I think you can be overly critical, and you can say that, you know, like, oh, yeah, this this is beyond repair. And, uh, and, and again, it's better not to be critical, I find. But uh, also, sometimes, uh, it's important to criticize the things you love, because... If you really love it, you should want it to be better, or something like that. Speaking of things that I want to be better, I want to be better at speaking about things that I, I, I need to. So, I think I'd explain the house situation, because I bought a new house. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's crazy when you think about how much of my last uh, seven months has revolved around uh, governments and their desires. Um, you know, like, I, it's, it's, uh, th this is proven that whole point about nudge theory, where, like, people think that they're not they're entirely in control of their own ideas and that they're, there's not a single thing in the outside world that can alter them and uh, you know change their opinion on things but then when you actually face the reality it's like oh no that's that's not true in the slightest and uh <laughs> you know I, I feel like my year is the greatest example of that we're like okay i needed to buy a house there was a uh, in the uk when you buy a house you have to pay a huge tax bill um on top of it uh, I guess the, the trade-off is that you don't pay a yearly tax bill in the UK. Or you do pay a yearly tax bill, but that's something else, um, like on your house. So you pay a huge uh, tax bill up front, and it can be as high as, uh, you know, like, to pay. I, if you were to buy a million pound house, I want to say it's like, I don't know, 70,000 pounds, something like that. Uh, I, I, I did that math very loosely off the top of my head, so don't hate me if it's wrong. But it's huge, the amount of tax that you pay. Um, and... Um, if you were, if, even if you were buying your first house and it was just a half million, wow, what a cheap place. Only half a million. I'm just kidding here, of course. But um, it's uh, it's interesting because you would pay a full £15,000 to the government just for the privilege of paying someone £500,000 for the house that you then pay off for the rest of your life. Because no one actually buys a house for £500,000. They get £500,000 worth of debt, but you can't get debt for the you know, for the tax, you have to pay the tax up front. It's very, very expensive. And so uh, basically I decided that uh, there was a tax cut to incentivize people to buy houses during the pandemic. I'm not actually sure how much sense that makes even in retrospect, right? But whatever, That's, <laughs> there was a tax cut to encourage people to, to buy houses. And I've been looking at buying a house in London forever anyway, 
but this this tax cut meant that it was a full 15 uh, almost 15 pounds uh, you know i i think it's it maybe even be more be 50 than 15 pounds but like it, it, effectively they were making it 15 thousand pounds cheaper to buy a house which was great it was wonderful it was exciting um because i you, that was one of the biggest things putting me off i mean again buying really expensive things and then being told oh yeah also these guys are going to need some money on top of the money you've already put in that is discouraging maybe not to just me anyway so speaking of things that aren't just discouraging to me um i uh i i basically been trying to do that and so um i the i the, the as, as I, I kept looking around at houses and i just kind of concluded like uh I, i'm not gonna find one uh that is like within my price point by the time and then uh like as i was about to leave the uk i did i found like a few that i i really really liked and so I was like, okay, I need to leave the UK in April. Like for, for visa reasons, I I had to be gone. Uh, don't don't question it too much. Just I I, I had a I had a legal um, <laughs> based reason to be leaving the United Kingdom. But I still really wanted this tax break on a house because otherwise I could not. Uh, I I could probably uh, you know, but I, I couldn't functionally afford the house. Let's put it that way. Um, because it was going to be so much more expensive in just three months. And so I had to buy a house while I wasn't in the country to be able to afford said house. And uh, the logistics of that, I'll admit, were kind of complex. I was worried about it in a lot of places because if there was some huge issue or if, like, you know, the house burned down, I wouldn't actually know about it for some time. Also, isn't that so strange? You can... Okay, so if you remove the snow on these blocks, you get a flower, and you can't place a torch over the flower... But if there's some snow and there's a flower, like there is in hopefully somewhere else, you can replace it with a torch. I think that's very strange, personally. Well, I guess I found the only example of a snow and a flower. So we'll just wait for the we'll wait for the snow to come back so I can <laughs> place my uh, my my flower down. Anyway, so uh, we're gonna do this all as one take, by the way. Oh, here we go. Perfect. Look at this. There's some flowers in the snow. I can torch away unless I break the snow first. In which case I can't torch it away, which is very strange. Speaking of things that are strange, um, yeah, having uh, the <laughs> for forcing people who are just you know put it, trying to buy uh, a house it, 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 to, to pay a lot of money kind of strange, you could argue. Um, but you know, it's it's better than having a yearly tax for the rest of your life, like uh, certain other countries do. Uh, in the United States. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, long story short, I, you see, there's another thing I don't personally like. I'm critical of my system, also critical of the other system. Maybe I'm just critical of everything. Maybe maybe I don't actually have real opinions and I just hate the world. Who knows for sure what it really is. Okay, let's place some more torches. Honestly, hills are so rough that we might just have to give up on the grid system and just torch it in a way so that everywhere is lit up effectively. That might be what we do today. Anyway, so, um, I, uh, I, 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 I decided to do this. I, I found a house. Uh, I actually found like two, I, I found a house I really liked. I put on an offer for the house. They rejected it. I put another offer. They rejected it. I put in another offer and they just ignored it, which I don't know. I don't know how to react to an offer in a house being ignored, but then I assumed it wasn't mine. Even I was probably going a bit too high on that other house. And it's like, okay, great opportunity for me to realize that I, I shouldn't have offered that amount because that house required so much work. And then I then I found a house I really, really, really liked. I put in an offer. They said, uh, nah. They, I put in another offer. They said, nah, we've been offered this amount. I put in more than the amount they've been offered. And they said, oh, sorry, we already agreed to sell it for that price. Uh, but if they fall through, we'll totally sell it to you. And it's like, ah, that doesn't help me because I need to do this in the next three months. But thank you for offering, I guess. And so, uh, yeah, I had like two houses I had to choose between at the very end. And I, it, it's really tricky because I'm really particular about what I wanted from a house. The reason that I, I've been wanting to buy a house for so long, despite already owning one, is because I bought a house deliberately just like as a cheap by UK standards, which sounds ridiculous because it costs, uh, you know, in the six figures for a cheap house if you live anywhere near the London region. But I bought a really cheap house. Um, and uh, the idea was like, you know, this is great. I can live in this for as long as I need to or as long as I want. And it's it's wonderful. And so the idea was I, I've always wanted to live in London, the city itself. I live I live just outside the uh, the you know, the, the city limits, maybe we could say uh, before. And, uh, you know, I always kind of I, I always knew that was the better decision financially, but it always kind of hurt on a, um, you know, it, like every single time I had to like, you know, get get a long train home. I was like, man, it sure would be better if I didn't have to do that, huh? Also, I might be placing torches in the wrong places. Again, wait, <laughs> when you're placing on hills, you have to kind of abandon 
any semblance of uh, making sense, I feel like. Anyway, but, um, so I, uh, I, I, I kind of, uh, I, I, I've been really, really picky. Uh, like, I, I've, I've, I've always wanted to move to the city and it's like, oh man, it's so expensive to live anywhere in actual London, London. Like, if you, the, the, the best, also, what just hurt me right there? I'm guessing random full damage. Um, so, basically, the, the, the thing is, is like, I, okay, I want to live somewhere near uh, a, a tube station, because um, if you, if you don't know, living in London, taking the metro, unlike a lot of other countries where basically taking the, you know, like taking public transport is like for poor people only, and therefore we need to make this as bad as we can because those darn poor people. Um, public transport in London is faster than taking a private vehicle for a lot of journeys. I'm not gonna say for every journey because, you know, that's impossible to be true. Um, and so if you if you wanna own a car, you own a car and you you pay a certain amount for that or whatever. Um, but if otherwise, like the fastest way to get around as well as the cheapest, is public transport, which I think is a good compromise. I think that the car can be a freedom vehicle, but it's not a freedom vehicle if you force everyone to drive it, whatever. That's that's a separate point that I have. Uh, you don't have to care about it. Um, but basically I need to live near a public transport place and public transport makes uh, makes a place more expensive because everyone wants the same. Uh, I wanted to live near like things, exciting things to eat in some way. So that means like, okay, be near this, it, you know, the center of stuff. And also I wanted it to be like within the central zones of London, like uh, the, the first like three or four zones at the very most. Even the first three, I was like, that's a bit much. I'd love to be in zone one London, which if you don't live in London, that makes no sense to you. So I just wanted to live near the center of a city because I love center cities when I travel to them. And I, I used to think, oh, but I couldn't live in one. But uh, every time I've spent a few months living in one, I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> and so I've decided, you know, okay, I want to live in London. But if I want all those requirements, and I also want, you know, like some amount of space, the best you can have in a city at the very least. And also, um, I, I again, I, I, I want to live somewhere that's like, you know, not, because one of the problems that people have with cities is like high crime rates or at the very least not feeling safe. I think feeling safe is such an arbitrary metric, but also such an important one. And so like, okay, how can you feel safe? But also, uh, you know, like, and the answer is like, oh yeah, the more expensive areas generally. And it's like, okay, that's another uh, count against me. So it's like, okay, I need a place that's already gonna be expensive because of location. I need to then be even more expensive by being in a prime part of that location. And then also I need it to be, you know, I ideally, uh, you know, safe and ideally, because places that are safe that are also uh, somewhat central are going to be for like what they like you know two two working professionals that are going to have a child together and so there's always a ton of schools or something like that. I need to be away from a school. Screaming children is the worst thing in the world. Honestly, even when children aren't screaming, they're not great. I am I'm not a fan of children overall, but screaming children are just like oh you can just bring this thing out with you and like you're gonna the the screaming becomes my problem because I'm annoyed by the loud noises that you're that your offspring is, and it's a long story short, I, I don't want to be near children. I don't mind being, you know, if I if I pass them by in the street, you know, I'm not going to be mad at their existence. I, I try not to uh, have any hatred to my heart towards things people can't control, and people can't control being children. I mean, they, like, the moment we have a pill that, you know, stops that, like, I, I mean, I guess we have pills that, that stop the, the existence of them, but, you know, um, my point here, okay, so this is actually six blocks away to 77, just over here. And then we can keep on heading this way. But basically, um, I, 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 I just, I, 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 I don't like children very much. Uh, truth be told, <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I want to live not near a school where there's going to be a loud number of them. Because again, you, I don't mind seeing them. I don't mind. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel like I'm like racist towards children. You know, I feel like it's like, oh yeah, don't worry. I, I have like five child friends. I've. I, I mean, I don't actually, that'd be weird if, see, it'd be weird if I will it, see, here's the thing, right? I'm an adult who does not have children, um, and wouldn't it be weird if I just said, was like, oh yeah, I've just, uh, I've picked up this, this child, and, uh, he hangs out of mine every now and then, he's, he's, he's so fun to hang around, it's so reward, no, you would be like, okay, we're gonna call the police, because that's not normal behavior, and I would go, Thank you. Please tell them to take this thing away. I was lying. Of course, of course, no one finds the company of a child entertaining. You just, you know, people. It's, it's. I think what it is is a lot of people. You know, when we talk about children here, people like the responsibility of children. I feel like, um, like again, that's. It's, it's fine. I, I'm not going to pretend that children are actually the worst thing in the world. I think that it probably is one of the more rewarding things you could choose to do of your life. But you know what? I reckon that people who gen, like you know, who get cancer and then recover from it. 
genuinely might be better from the process. It doesn't mean that I'm hoping for cancer, you know? I, I think that people who have their house burned down in a fire are like, oh yeah, now I, now I understand that material, your possessions are material possessions and I care about them less. You're a better person for the experience, but I still don't want that experience, you know? And that's, how, that's where I'm currently out of children. I, you know, I, uh, <laughs> I think people, also I think people who hate children and like know uh, why children are terrible have the best children, you know? Cause you're, you're like trying to avoid your child becoming that. Whereas people are just like, oh, children are so great all the time. It's like, uh, you're going to have a monster of a child that doesn't, doesn't know boundaries, doesn't, doesn't understand that it's not the center of attention all the time, and that screams because it knows that it can, you know, that, that, it screams because it thinks that's the way it gets what it wants from you, but then it starts annoying so many other people. You know, it's, it's a whole thing. Man, that was a whole rant about children. But yeah, so I wanted to be in a, in an area not near a school, which was actually kind of challenging, but like, getting a central area not not near a school like again not within like i guess three blocks of a school which again in that but also being like kind of nature also being like this also being very central but like not actually central because london is moving slowly east over time whatever it's a whole interesting thing and so uh finding somewhere of all of those criteria that was ideally as big as possible because i everyone always says this phrase of like oh yeah you'll grow out of the house eventually and it's like, I don't want that. Mo selling house and having to buy another one means I have to pay that one-time tax again. In addition to, you know, like having to pay, I had to pay a legal professional to get the house deeds signed over to me. I did that and I, you know, like, we'll, we'll rant about some things I don't know about later. Um, I had to, I, I, a legal professional to sign the things over to me. I had to pay someone to go around the house, which you have to do regardless of whether you're in the country or not, by the way. And then I had to like send, I had to go with so much like paperwork and so much, like pain just buying and selling a house isn't ideal honestly pro tip if you if you don't need to sell a house or you don't need the money or whatever uh just just don't just save yourself the pain uh you you'll you'll thank me in the long run i uh <laughs> and when people think that like oh i'm renting so i'm just paying off someone's mortgage it's like ah uh, you, you you are making a financial loss in some ways on the equity you could be building but my god is owning a home just the worst thing in the world it is i i i can't <laughs> I can't stand it. I'm so glad that when I went, to, so I, I bought a new house while I was in the United States. While I was in the United States, I didn't own a house there. I li I stayed in an apartment. A lot of people, you know, what, this is crazy. Uh, people in my comment section don't realize you can own an apartment. Um, you, I, I don't know how that's possible. It's like, you know, who, who do you think rents them to you? Like, how do you, how do you think that works? <laughs> but yeah, people, people uh, say stuff like, oh, uh, you know, like you, you, own, you rent an apartment, but you own a condo. And it's like, so what happens when I own my condo? Do I rent it to someone and it magically becomes an apartment? And it's like, whatever, okay. Let's not think about that too much. Speaking of things we shouldn't uh, think about, I wanted to um, uh, I, I wanted to go back into and just kind of finish like, so I, I organized with a, uh, a property lawyer, they're called solicitors in the UK, as in just lawyers, not property solicitors. Um, anyway, I, I spoke with one of those and they're like, yep, yeah, we can do the entire process even while you're living in the United States, even if you're staying in the United States of America, as long as you send us this before you go, and as long as you can get paper copies of these back, we'll make sure that all the paper copies come at the same time. So you just have to send one package. And so yeah, I bought a house while I was in America. It finished um, two, two, like it, it finished the week of the deadline. If it was a week later, I would have lost, uh, you know, all of those tax savings and basically been next to unable to afford the house. I mean, I, like again, I would have paid it and then been in, a, a large amount of debt that I'd have to like scramble for to make it happen. It'd be a whole thing. Anyway, so long story short, I'm glad the house went through uh, without too many hitches. Uh, actually, there were there were so many hitches in the process actually, but I don't want to talk about them and get. I, I will rant for like ten minutes about like I hate dealing with human beings in general. Human beings who want things from you, even worse. Human beings who want things from you they shouldn't want from you, but they act like it's a normal thing that they're wanting. The absolute worst. Um, I'm I'm still, uh, at, you know, again, I, <laughs> paperwork. It's the worst thing in the world. It is people trying to look good by forcing you to do some work on their behalf. Um, and some of it is legal, and that's important. Uh, and some of it is like, huh, this is this is someone covering their ass legally, and I guess that's important for them. Anyway, so um, the interesting thing is I, I got the house. Uh, I got when I got back to the UK. Just what is it? Three days ago now. I don't understand days anymore. Whenever I go back and forth between the UK and America, I get so jet lagged. 
uh, that like I just I don't make sense and uh, even even like I, I'm probably confusing a lot of people like how are you going over the same blocks over and over again because I'm confused okay because I'm confused um, but yeah so basically I, uh, I I I'm now back to the UK I had my uh, when the when the house purchase went through I had a family member pick up the keys uh, you know check through the house and the house was like filled with slightly more furniture than was agreed because they because it was previously a tenant house it was like agreed in the legal documents that they could leave like a desk and a a, a bed frame in each room but they le they left a few other things and i was going to be mad about it but they also left a tv in every room so i really think they were just lazy landlords that like didn't didn't consider five tvs to have any value which is crazy because like they're, 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 they're like somewhat modern tvs they're like five years old um at most and they you know, even 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 any screen, any TV right has a value to someone, and so it's like, ah, oh, that was some easy money. They left two fridges in the place. <laughs> There's a lot of interesting things that are left here, but as well as just leaving things, which is fine. You know, you can remove things very easily. Um, whether you should have to or not is the thing you could maybe uh, start to talk about. But um, so I I came back to the house and it's like it's in worse condition than when it was left. Which I again I I think unless you, like there there is like a legal minimum of like. I think it's called broom clean. You have to have a place be clean enough that like, it's clear that you could do that yourself without the, and so long story short, it's like not amazingly clean. And also there's like some, some leaks that have even developed in the last three months or were very well hidden before. Again, I'm sure I have some legal recourse. If I do, let me know in the UK what, I, what I've got to do about that. Um, but long story short, I, uh, I there's a lot of things that I have to fix. Even just stuff like, oh yeah, the flooring is so much more scratched than I remembered. Again, I, I, I think some of it is down to my memory. Uh, some of it is down to um, well-placed furniture and hiding stuff, etc. But um, so the, the, the house is going to take a lot more work uh, than I thought. And also, by the way, in case you're curious, I am still... The way that I, I pulled this up is I, I, I... Instead of what most people do is where they buy and sell a house at the same time, you can do something... Um, the most common way you do it is with something called bridging funds. You can sell a house after you buy a house and then you can borrow the money in between for like a mortgage rate because the bank knows they're going to get the money as soon as that house sells. And uh, so yeah, I, I, te I temporarily am owning two houses until uh, very, very early on next year. And uh, so all of the stuff is in the old house and I just got to move it to the new house, which is also now mine. And so in the meantime, I'm temporarily a two house owner. However, the problem is, um, if you don't mind my uh, diving too much into my current issues. You know, I, th this is what this Let's Play is. It's Toy Cat Talks about what's going on in his world. Um, but uh, r right now, my my issue is that all of my money is tied up in a house, uh, which is which is fine. That was going to be normal. But, like, I need that to make this house worth living in and, like, happy to live in. And it's like, oh, but it, I, I can't sell it until... Uh, April of next year, basically, because of other dumb tax reasons. And so, yeah, the um, there's an interesting thing here of, uh, like, because uh, also in case you're curious, uh, th this was like me being, I don't want to say dumb, but I I have this fear whenever I'm about to commit, because when you commit to buying a house, and again, no one actually buys a house, generally speaking, maybe if you've got enough YouTube money, but even even in the echelons of Toy Cat, even with all that Toy Cat tax, um, I, even with all of that, uh, it's still like, oh yeah, I, I'm. This is this is actually because it's in London. It's a very expensive house. You're committing to spending for 30 years a large proportion of your income, or well, a proportion of your income, on something, and it's always terrifying to me. Like I, I never like debt. Generally speaking, it's just pretty much the only way to get a house. And so, um, I, uh, I, I think it. This is my like, when I was in America. It was my last like two or three months without a giant second mortgage payment, basically, that would that would sap away a lot of the things until... And, and so basically I was like, okay, before I make this big commitment, I'm gonna live a good life in New York. New York's another nice, good city. So I, I rented a very expensive apartment. I actually think that video has just gone live on the third channel now, actually. Uh, so I, I rented the very expensive third uh, <laughs> apartment. You, you can learn about how expensive that was if you wanna um, judge my financial decisions, perhaps. Uh, right, rightfully so. But, um, and uh, I, I live like, uh, you know, like I went for a lot of fun takeout in one of the best cities for food in the world. Honestly, you know, okay, if you want to know just how, like, I'm going I'm to share very honestly and frankly, and you can, again, you can look at this and say it's a, it's a, it's a silly thing to share with the internet or that 
I'm dumb for doing it. And look, both those things are true. But uh, I, I think I ate out or ordered in every single day of the last three months. <laughs> and that sounds like an exaggeration. Um, the only times where it wasn't true, like with no, I, I mentally checked and I couldn't find a single example otherwise, is if I brought and bought enough food the previous day that I had leftovers that I would then eat. You know, like if I ordered a steakhouse or something. And so every single day I ate takeout or delivery of some form. I I have not been able to weigh myself, but the last time I did, I like in the first month I'd gained six pounds. <laughs> and I'd already gained 10 pounds from the last time I went to America. So I lived a very good life, a very rich life, some could say. But uh, rich has two meanings, you see. And I think it was maybe a bit too much the second meaning and not enough the first meaning. Uh, and so, yeah, I lived a, a, a very fun time in the United States. However, spending all of the money uh, on like a last... This this is a problem with money is like, I was like, oh, I'm going to run. I, I'm going to not have money soon. Better do one last big spend before I feel bad for spending money. But it's like, you know, the, the problem of spending money is not is not the feeling bad bit. It's the spending it bit. And so, uh, yeah, long story short, exacerbating my issue a tiny bit regarding... Um, we're exacerbating my issue just a tiny bit when it comes to uh, the the house and like you know getting it fixed up with money that I don't have till I sell my other house, which I can't legally sell till April because otherwise I'll have to pay uh, some amount of tax on it. Because when you buy something and you sell it at a higher price, you, t you you pay tax on the difference, and so it's but, but only after you've earned a certain amount in a year. And so it's actually advantageous to wait, uh, even though that means potentially borrowing money from a bank and paying the bank money than it is to pay a large amount of money to the government. It's very confusing. And my point of all of this is, first of all, um, even I would like to believe that I, I, I like finance a lot. It's a subject I'm really passionate about. Would love to have a whole finance channel. I've said many times before, the only reason I haven't done that is because like busy with all the channels I have right now. And like even then, I, I, and you know, like all, all the things I'm regretting not doing, like I've, I've missed streaming for so long. Um, you, you might think like, oh, something, something, cynical money reasons, but it's, it really is like, yeah, you, not only is streaming like a, a fun little pastime uh, that is, you know, sometimes, uh, gen, you know, like is a, is a revenue positive thing in a, in a very good way. Uh, but also it's like, I miss the, the interactions of it, the regularity of like all of that stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a lot of things I've been neglecting uh, over the last few months as I've been in another country moving around very often. Um, and yeah, long story short, I bought a house. It's now, it's in a condition where it needs a lot more fixing than I thought. I knew it needed some fixing. It needs a lot of fixing, but the money for the fixing is gonna come through that. And by the way, this this entire story, every single step of it, it's crazy. I didn't realize, as someone who likes to believe I'm in control of my own destiny, you know, like I'm a big, uh, I'm, I'm big on the free will end of the spectrum when it comes to at least what I wanna believe. I wanna believe that I'm making my own decisions all the time. Whether I am or not is a fun debate we could totally dive into. Um, but uh, the the problem, the problem as I see it, is that, um, or an interesting thing with the idea that like I'm making no decisions, is that very subtle, you know, like, basically the government just making a few slight changes here. You know, saying, oh yeah, we'll give you a slight discount on the tax for buying a new house if you buy it in these certain dates, made me desperate to buy it in those certain dates. When the government said, oh yeah, it is... Um, you know, like, um, when it, when it was like, oh yeah, you, you are, uh, going to have to, uh, stay here until this certain date, at which point it stops becoming illegal. I had to do that. When, when the United States government said you can't come into the United States where I had to be, uh, for visa reasons, doesn't matter what my reason is, uh, unless I was married or a dependent or a permanent resident of American or an American citizen or whatever. I could not get into America unless I went to a third country first. So that that piece of government policy shifted me to being in Mexico but in, for two weeks, which is a lot, which is crazy. It's a lot of people's dream holiday, but I was just like, okay, counting down the days till I'm going to my intended destination. Um, like, uh, you know, and, and then that's before we consider the fact that like, oh yeah, I got, uh, because of all the incentives, I got vaccinated in the United States. Uh, because, of, because of those incentives where I got vaccinated in another country, the UK, even though they recognize the vaccine. I, I mentioned that whole thing about how they, they are forcing me to quarantine, because which they wouldn't if I was vaccinated here, because again, they that, that's a whole thing. Just all these subtle things are shaping my life in huge ways. And it makes me go back to my default position of like, wouldn't it be cool if we, if we got to make our own? Uh, you know, like, I actually think it's interesting that like, 
when it's a subtle nudge, it's fine, you know? When it's like, oh yeah, here is a tax break. Would you like to buy a house? We'll make it slightly easier for you. That's great, right? That's like, um, there's 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 a lot of interesting arguments about like when, how, etc. They should do that. But the the much more interesting thing is, um, I rather than uh, I, the, the much more interesting thing to me than uh, like having just a slight tax break to encourage behavior is that like you can actually have certain behaviors forced on you. And when should we force people to do things? It's always the kind of quintessential like hypothetical question of like. If you think about it, right, every single thing, um, this is like a, oh, this, this is like a, this is a, a baseline for quite a few uh, places political theory. But like, if you, because um, a lot of people say stuff like, you know, uh, there's no one forcing you to do insert thing here. You know, besides like, it, like no one's forcing you not to speed. You just get a, a fine if you don't. But it's like, well, if you don't pay that fine, um, then someone will, you know, they'll arrange a court date. And if you miss that court date and you miss that, and, and somewhere along the system for anything you do, someone will come and try and take you and put you in prison. And if you, if you resist that person, that person will pull out a, you know, or like they'll have a gun on them to make sure that you don't though. Um, and it's, it's like called the dumb man with gun theory. I think it's particularly common in libertarianism, but it's like a, it's an interesting concept of like, when are you willing to force someone to do something, you know, using a uh, threat of force if necessary. And the answer should be like, as few times as we need to, probably, <laughs> right? And um, it's interesting because the last year has been a really good example of like, huh, when, like, I, I, I should, is shifting people's behavior even good to begin with? Uh, everyone seems to think so. Everyone, everyone has this agreed opinion that what everyone else is doing is really bad and what they're doing is really great, you know? They're like, oh yeah, you, what you're doing is killing my grandma, whereas what I'm doing is essential. And that's, you know, like all the stories of people um, going into parks and being like, why are there so many people in this park? It's like, you're in the park. It's the same thing as that uh, thing from earlier, where it's like, when you're a car stuck in traffic, you're not stuck in traffic. You are the track. You're, you're an equal part of this traffic. These people are all going somewhere for their own reasons. We all have uh, our own reasons and incentives for doing things. It's very confusing. And uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just kind of realized that, like, implicitly, even without being ever forced to do something, besides I was forced to uh, to go to a third country, although even then it, was, it wasn't it was even a force. It was like, hey, you can't come here unless you've been somewhere else. And then, like, okay, I'll go somewhere else then. Fine, sure, works about us. You know, like, I, I think in, in a proves interesting point about uh, force, that actually goes back to children from earlier, right? So, um, <laughs> this is, a, this is a, one of my... One of my biggest pro tips. I'm I'm not a parent. I don't know if I intend to be one. Um, but the biggest pro tip a lot of parents will give you is when you have a child that doesn't want to do something, don't just tell them this is what you're going to do. You give them a choice. Rather than saying, you're going to eat your vegetables and you're going to like it, Timmy. You know, Timmy starts crying or he, he goes, no. And then what are you going to do? You've lost all authority. You say, Timmy, you're going to eat all your vegetables or you're not going to be able to play games after. Or I, I guess... Uh, you know, I, we can we can eat the vegetables and play games, or we can not eat the vegetables and no games. That's like consequence based one. Or you could just do something like, okay, uh, if you want to be more maybe conniving, you'd be like, we're either going to eat the broccoli or we're going to eat the carrots. Which is it going to be? You don't give them the option of we're going to eat nothing, uh, because then they're, they're going to be smart and come up with that themselves. Um, and you know that they're, they're like thinking about the two options, which one's better, which one's worse. It's um it's kind of the same thing. If you ever go to a cinema, right, and I've, I, I've watched a fair few movies before getting to the UK, where obviously I've been at home for the last um, while or so, but um, there is a an interesting thing where at, at the movies, they'll they'll tell you that a, a small coat costs uh, 6 dollars oh, Sorry, they'll, they'll t if you ask how much a large coat costs, it's like $8. How much does a small coat cost? $7.50. And it's like you can either have the small coke for seven fifty, or you can have the large coke for eight. Which one do you want? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, one of those is really bad value though. And then you're so focused on how bad value the option you're not choosing is that you don't really think about whether the large coke is actually good value. It just seems like it compared to the bad value option. Oh, there's there's a ton of deep slate on here. Probably gonna add more to it later, huh? Probably gonna add. Oh, that means all of these torches are gonna get replaced. Oh no, it's only the side I'm replacing, not the. Not the top. We're fine. Uh, speaking of things that are fine, I uh, 
I think that this this video going on so long, I, I'm in the busiest phase of my life right now, just doing so many micro things. I'm unpacking, but also moving house, but also trying to get back to a video schedule. But also, um, one of the other crazy things, I did know about this about the house before moving in, I wanna clarify, it wasn't like sprung on me or anything. Uh, but it is still a big something, uh, is the house, again, lots of houses I looked at in this area have uh, full-on uh, gigabit ethernet. It's a it's a common enough thing. However, this this house, I don't even know why. It's it's right next to so many houses that have gigabit, but this house has, uh, by default, it's a copper cable that, I think it speeds of 0.9 <laughs> megabytes. The highest I could get a network to offer me was 66 uh, megabits, sorry, megabits a second. Uh, down and so obviously that's not enough to live stream off assuming it's not the same amount up and um, a uh, lo Long story short what I'm trying to say right here is I'm also trying desperately to get internet that is good to work here And that is a lot harder than it might sound <laughs> Given the uh, it's it's kind of uh, weird, but I have a company that is hopefully gonna be digging some fiber to my house somewhat soon but so getting internet to work Getting a contractor to like give me a price for all the things I need to fix. Getting someone to paint and refill the walls because they're filled with nails. There's so much <laughs> that I have to do on top of uh, what we're normally going to be doing. But the goal is I'm back in the UK. I don't. I'm not going to be traveling for a while because I don't have the, sadly, don't have the, the capacity to do that while I'm in this like squeezed money phase between two houses. Where I put together everything I could so I could get this house in time, knowing that I could sell the previous house to, you know, to pay it off, but then have to wait until the next tax year because putting together everything I own meant selling things and make it whatever. It's it's been a whole interesting uh, process, but the end result of it, the reason I wanted to tell you all of that, is first of all to give you a life update. I've got a new house. It's very exciting. There isn't a school in the area, unlike a lot of the other great houses I looked at, and it doesn't require it doesn't require any building work. Um, it just is, it's it's smart. There's, there's there's some building work I want, and there's some building work that would save me replacing something. Uh, sorry, uh, there's building work that would save me fixing something, because I my favorite thing in the world to do, and this is wasteful and people hate when you say it out loud. It's like, oh, this is terrible. I When something is broken, rather than fixing it, just get a new thing that you wanted anyway. You know, like, rather, because people get new things by default, like a new phone every couple years. I just, I wait for a phone to break, and then when it does, new phone time. Perfect, you know? <laughs> Phones are gonna break at some point anyway, and so that's when you should set up the logical break point. I, I've, I wanted a new uh, front door forever, because uh, I, I just thought they were cool, and then mine got really beat up, and it's like, oh, awesome, new front door. Should I put torches in this? I don't know why I haven't already, actually. I guess lining them up would be real hard. I'm gonna just place torches around the edge of this as a kind of end for today. Because we've, we've gone on for a 44 minute one shot video. This is mostly for those of you who miss live streaming. Here you go. We have uh, another live stream style let's play. They do a lot, okay, I, I should we talk about, um, now nah, we let's not talk, I, I feel like I do real side of YouTube business and like what's actually happening too often. So uh, instead I'll just say that, there we go, place the torch on the chicken. Instead I'll just say that, uh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll just say, oh god, that's that's what I'm gonna say. Um, instead, what I'm gonna say is that um, this, it's it's crazy to me how many tasks, like, I, uh, I find it really hard to do a lot of stuff in a day when that stuff involves so many things that I hate and don't really know how to do. Like, calling someone up to get a new bathroom fitted is a surprisingly hard process. You'd figure there'd be a store called the bathroom store I go into. I say, I want this, this, this. They say it costs this amount, and then I go to the next store, and they are, but no, that someone comes around to your house, they they give you a few options, they tell you how much it'll cost based on those options, and then you're like, okay, and then you wait for the next person. But how do you find the people to come around your house? Because you've got to find someone you trust, or well, you go on the internet, and then you go on the internet, and most places that will say they're doing like, for instance, I'm looking for some, uh, for some work to be done on the loft of this house. So they'll say they do loft conversions, but then I contact some of them, they're like, oh, we don't design or, like, a, you know, someone in, in a stream recently said like, oh yeah, you need an architect if you're gonna build new house stuff. And I was like, I don't need an architect. I'm not building a tower. Well, who do you think I am? But no, as it turns out, yeah, like an actual architect has to come in and they have to build, they have to make a design for you so that someone can build it. 
And it's like, but but I, I how, how are we going to know how much it costs if it's not designed? And it's like, well, we'll design it with a, and a long story short, all I'm saying with all of this insanity right here is that it's hard to get work done in a house and then also get anything real done in a day. I'm, I'm a big procrastinator as it is anyway, but just the list of things I have to do and the number of people I have to, phone calls I have to make. I have to make actual phone calls to people uh, all while trying to unpack and repack and all while trying to make videos, all while not having internet. It's uh, It's been hard, but I think uh, during times where things are hard, you know, I, I like to, I appreciate that a lot of people jump and they're like, hey, we, we understand Toy Cat. I, I, and I, I really do appreciate people who are like that. But there is also an element of like, you know, understanding is not how the YouTube algorithm works. Um, I, the, as I, if I release fewer videos or worse videos or whatever else, um, then, you know, that means that YouTube will show my videos to fewer people and I get paid less during that time. So it's like, no, you've got to also get the work done. And I think, I think adversity is, see, this, this goes back to the children thing. I'm, even though I'm, a lot of people, who don't intend to have children get very anti-child um, and kind of like understandably again they're loud they're annoying and they're a burden that you get to place on society and I've never felt that's fair like why why do you get to just decide that society has to deal with a child and that's okay you know what why are there places that are allowed to put up signs saying no pets but there aren't places allowed to put up signs saying no children we'd be like that's discrimination I'm a parent and it's like well fine go to all the other places that aren't like this you know uh, but like again, people people would actually be up in arms about that one, right? Would that would they not? Um, and so, um, I long story short, what I'm trying to say with all of this um, is is that I feel like um, sometimes hard times are just hard, but sometimes just just like having a child or embarking on a big project, it's like all about the eventual payoff. And I feel like Minecraft is the game that teaches you more than any other game about eventual payoff, right? And that's something I think is cool. If you think it's cool too, then that's wonderful. Is this actually, well, these torches are slightly unlined up. So I'll just place a second one there and then I'll move the grid one block to the left. I'll just leave the second torch there for now. And then we go six blocks down. So from 227 down to 221. And there we go. We probably need some more torches in the spaces between, but that's fine. Or is this just an entirely different grid? Honestly, the whole world was meant to be this perfect seamless grid. I think the easiest way to do that would have been probably divide coordinates by six, and then I could have always checked and, but you know, I didn't do that, okay? And what I've done instead has been much more delightful and fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm slowly but surely getting to a point where almost all of this world is lit up. Speaking of slowly but surely, uh, the Let's Play update is coming out real soon on the Marketplace. And speaking of slowly but surely, I apologize for the slow pace and getting videos back to normal. Um, and I'm sorry that I, I think I missed the stream last week. I might even miss this week's Thursday stream, but my intention is to always be here for you on a Monday if I physically can be, as well as obviously the weeklies, you know, the Saturday or the Sunday or the whatever else. And uh, yeah, as it turns out, I don't hate Minecraft. I hate making phone calls and I hate uh, doing doing a lot of things in a day uh like so i i hate doing a hundred minute miniature tasks in a day i kind of like having one big one like load up minecraft talk to people about what's going on in the world talk to people about how dumb it is the the idea of like oh you're about to not have money soon so better spend that money um and how that's a you know that's it, it's a thing that is you know instilled into a lot of people myself included from like not having a lot of money uh at certain points in their life and uh, I guess, you know, rather than being sad or tragic about anything, instead, I'm happy. I own a house and I'm very excited by it. I hope to show it to you in six months or a year or whenever it's actually complete. Because, uh, yeah, I get to live in my dream location, which is in the middle of a big city, which is where it's very hard and very expensive to actually own any property, let alone an actual house with actual space. Um, and so... Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited. Uh, I don't know when my life will change in some substantial way to actually like, because you know what? I I there's so many things that I wanna live in a city for, but a lot of those things shut down. Some of them permanently during the last year. That uh, for the next uh, week, I still cannot uh, go out and enjoy a lot of those things too. 
And also, because of money, I, I'm going to be enjoying food, you know, and stuff like that. The fun, exciting things in this great city of food. A little bit less. But, um, I don't know. I just want to give you an update on what's going on in my life. If you liked this video, uh, thank you so much for watching it. It really does mean a lot. Like, uh, I, in, not only because you watched my video and that's great and you helped contribute to the stability of my, my life and my career and everything, but also I want to thank you because, um, ultimately, uh, this entire experience is a reminder that everything isn't always easy and we can pretend that we don't want it easy, but in reality we do, right? We don't want it to be raining in Minecraft. We don't want to have things that follow us around and demand to be fed and scream at us if we don't do that. Man, so so needy am I, right, from those little little biological humans that come out of other humans. But it's sometimes hard to make videos, but I always want to do it as best I can, and I hope that you appreciate that whenever it means that we miss a day or something like that. And I hope that we get some internet running in this house soon, <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I would like to live stream on Thursday, and indeed, I would like to see you all in the next video, whether that be tomorrow, whether that be on Tuesday or Wednesday or the stream on Thursday, but I look forward to seeing you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, because I'll see you next time.